Hello dear viewers, myself Dr. Palani Raman, a practicing pediatrician from Tindivanam, Tamil Nadu. Today the topic for discussion is obesity, a multi-organ disorder. As you all know, currently obesity is a global pandemic. India too is not an exception. Particularly following COVID, childhood obesity has risen to epidemic proportions. According to the latest NFHS survey, around 20 to 25 percent of the adults in India are obese, women overtaking men. With respect to children, around 10 percent are obese, particularly school going child as well as adolescents. And it can vary according to the age, gender, socio-economic status and geography. For example, in rural schools, it can be as low as 5% compared to urban elite schools where it can be as high as 25%. What is obesity? Obesity is nothing but excess body fat secondary to excess food intake more than the calories which you burn and which imparts a lot of health risk to that individual. How to diagnose obesity? Obesity is diagnosed by a simple method by body mass index which is easy and reproducible. Body mass index is equal to weight in kilograms by height in meter square. According to the consensus guideline of Asian Indians, body mass index of 23 and 25 are used as the cutoff for overweight and obesity. It is low compared to the western standards. As well as waist circumference is also used in Indians. Why? Because they are more prone for central obesity. Waist circumference of more than 90 in men and more than 80 in women are considered as cutoff for central obesity. What about childhood obesity? For children less than 5 years, weight for height in the WHO growth chart is used to calculate obesity. Any child more than 2 standard deviation or 97th percentile is considered to be overweight. More than 3 standard deviation or 99.9 .9 percentile considered to be obese. What about older children? In children 5 to 18 years of age, IAP 2015 BMI charts are available where 23rd and 27th adult equivalents are considered as the cutoff for overweight and obesity. To simplify this further, Dr. Vaman Kadilkar et al. had devised a ready to use BMI charts to directly plot whether the child is overweight or obese for children 8 to 18 years of age which is easily available in the Indian Academy of Pediatrics website. After diagnosing obesity, let us come to the classification of obesity. In simple terms it can be classified as primary or secondary. Primary or exogenous obesity constitutes around 90% of the obesity, whereas secondary or endogenous or pathological obesity constitutes only 10%. Usually they are endocrinal, monogenic, syndromic, psychiatric or chronic drug abuse, etc, etc. With respect to pathophysiology, Mainly in a genetically predisposed individual, particularly Asian indi individuals are endowed with thrifty genes when they are exposed to an adverse environment in the form of excessive calorie intake more than the activity or more than the calories they burn, they accumulate a lot of body fat which are hazardous to the health. The important hazards or consequences of obesity as you already told, it is a multi-organ disorder. To start from the top to bottom, it causes 
stroke in the brain, loss of self-esteem and depression psychologically, ischemic heart disease, sleep disordered breathing, gallstones, fatty liver, type 2 diabetes mellitus, dyslipidemia, hypertension, infertility, PCOS and musculoskeletal problems like early onset osteoarthritis, slipped capital, slipped capital femoral epiphysis and to end even cancer. So the list goes on. Coming to the clinical approach, a detailed history and a clinical examination will offer a lot of clues for primary or a secondary obesity. History of early onset, less than 5 years of age, suggests mostly you are dealing with a monogenic or syndromic obesity or a rapid weight gain indicates that it indicates mostly a hypothalamic injury, secondary to trauma or etc. Birth history, SGA or LGA babies are more prone for obesity. Top fed baby versus breastfed baby. Any weaning issues, particularly taking tons and tons of cow's milk. And the developmental issues, developmental delay, particularly in a syndromic child. And poor growth velocity and not growing properly indicates mostly an endocrinal cause, can be hypothyroid or hypopit or a Cushing. As well as any auditory handicaps or visual handicaps and pubertal issues will all give a clue for a secondary obesity. Apart from that, dietary history in detail is very important for primary obesity what the child is taking, what the family is taking, as well as the screen time, as well as the sign, mainly the activity part and lifestyle measures in that family are all very important. And finally, the family history, mainly family history of obesity or family history of metabolic syndrome in the form of diabetes, mellitus, etc. are very important. Following history, the clinical examination the weight, height, BMI, waist circumference confirms the child is having obesity or not. Then you should measure the BP. From head to foot, any dysmorphic faces or any Cushingoid faces or any buffalo hump or any acanthosis nigricans or hepatomegaly or any genital abnormalities short stature, all the things should be taken into consideration while examination. By the end of the history and examination, we can really come to a conclusion whether what we are dealing with a primary or a secondary obesity. Whom to investigate? With regard to primary obesity, the main investigation is to know the consequences of obesity. Mainly fasting blood sugar, HbA1c, fasting lipid profile, SGPT, ultrasound abdomen for fatty liver. If there is sleep abnormalities, sleep studies. Whereas with respect to secondary obesity, the investigations are mainly to find out the cause. If you suspect endocrine obesity, endocrine investigations. Suspect a CNS or hypothalamic obesity, MRI brain. If you suspect syndromic, mainly the genetic studies or monogenic obesity genetic studies. So these are the thing investigations you should look into. After investigations, going to the management. Management is simple if you know whether you are dealing with a primary or secondary. So when red flags are present, for example, short and obese, early onset obesity, Developmental delay, auditory and visual handicaps, pivotal issues, all these are handicaps or red flags to say that we are dealing with a secondary obesity and refer to an endocrinologist for management. Coming to the management of primary obesity, it's mainly lifestyle intervention. Diet, exercise and lifestyle measures are the main 
steps of therapy diet mainly balanced nutrition avoiding junks ultra processed foods sweetened beverages and taking plenty of vegetables and fruits are very important if possible you can take a nutritionist advice too coming to that exercise a goal of 60 minutes of activity per day or at least 300 minutes per week is essential coming to other lifestyle measures avoidance of sedentary activities and a good sleep particularly in adolescence to avoid binge eating and obesity is very important realistic weight loss goals and holistic family involvement is a key to success in obesity management about the drug therapy and bariatric surgery better leave it to the concerned specialist coming to the prevention of obesity which is the very very vital thing when it comes to obesity as obesity management is a tough process catch them young catch them early by growth monitoring as school going is age is the age when the obesity starts and encourage them with the beautiful steps like traffic signal approach about the food and good mainly the exercise at least 30 minutes per day and less screen time of 1 to 2 hours family involvement in the daily activities mainly the exercises and walking etc this is at the individual level when it comes to the schools physical education activities to be improved and behavioral interventions in the form of the diet and healthy lifestyle should be improved should be told in the school when it comes to the community obesity awareness programs has to be conducted and screening of overweight adolescents to be taken care and finally iap as an academic body should take steps to prevent discourage as well as ban the celebrity promoted junk foods in the media at the policy makers level to conclude obesity is a preventable malady catch them young catch them early should be the mantra and prevent health hazards of obesity thank you very much